Hello and welcome to today's tutorial where I'm going to walk you through how to paint a coffee mug using watercolors. I've seen a lot of coffee mug paintings on Pinterest and I think they're super fun to do with watercolors and I'm going to show you how to do it in a simple and easy to follow way. For a list of everything you need to get started, be sure to check out the video description below. All right, so let's get started with sketching out the mug. It's a pretty straightforward shape. Um, so you can simply just do a circle on the middle of the page. And you want to keep your circle nice and light. If, you're, if you have trouble drawing a perfect circle, simply grab a coffee mug you have and use it to trace a circle. All right, so once you have a circle on the middle of the page, you can just draw a little handle. And the handle should come out just like so. And then we're gonna draw the rim of the coffee mug. Now, most of my mugs are a little bit thinner, so I'm gonna keep this one fairly thin. Maybe a bit wider than it would normally be, but still relatively skinny. Just like so. And once I get it, the circle that I like, I'll just darken it a little bit. And you can always go in and erase some of these lines after if there's any you don't quite like. All right, so that's the basic outline we're gonna get for this coffee. And we're gonna start by doing the center. And the reason for that is the outside of the coffee is uh, coffee mug is going to be white. So that gives us separation between the background and the center. And yeah, so we're gonna get started by coloring in the whole center with water and leaving a little wet mark. And what I mean by a wet mark is, sorry, it's sort of like a, like a shine in the water so that you know that it's water coffee. And we'll just continue to put water all over. We're probably gonna have to have a couple of different little shine marks, but we'll start with that. And then I'm gonna start with a little bit of a reddish brown. And I'm gonna just drop that in in a couple of places. And we're wanting the paint to really bleed around the page. You don't want to have to help it out. So you should have enough water that it bleeds, but not so much water that it's pooling on the page. And if you get some blooms happening, we love that. That's awesome. So just keep working your way around with the reddish brown or whatever brown you have on hand. I notice that there's a little bit of white here and I'm going to go with that and leave it white. Sometimes if you already have some that naturally appeared, that's great. And if not, you can do a little bit lighter on your next layer. So now I'm gonna add a bit of variation by adding some burnt umber to the page. I don't want the coffee to just be one shade of brown. That's not very interesting. So I'm changing it up a bit. And then maybe a little bit of yellow ochre just over here. And we'll let that dry. And while that's drying, I'm gonna go in and do the background. And the background's gonna consist of a few different layers and that's why I wanna do it to start. Instead of getting the coffee per perfect, we kind of jump around. So for the background, I'm going to do what I do in a lot of my paintings. I'm gonna do a fairly organic shape. And it's, I'm gonna be mindful of not covering up the white of the mug. So the white is gonna really shine in this piece. So the background is going to be very messy, just like mornings are for me. Chaotic, crazy, and coffee often helps with that. All right, so for the background, I'm going to spill some coffee. So I'm gonna start by just dropping in more of that red right near the mug. You can just dab some in. My brush looks like it had a little bit of pink on it. That's great. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some splatters using a large flat brush. Now, whatever you brush you have that holds a lot of paint is great for this. You take a few and you just drop them on. And the, the more water that's on your brush, the bigger the splatters will be. 
Now I want some of these to drip down a bit, so I'm gonna lift up the page and see where the drips naturally go, and then I'll help them along with the brush. Sometimes you can just lift it up till they fall, but for this one, I just decided to help it along a bit. Now I don't wanna have all coffee color. I think I might do a little bit of teal over here or some other color, maybe some gray. So we're gonna keep going, making our way around. I'm gonna take a bit of Payne's gray. I'm running out of Payne's gray, which is terrible because I love Payne's gray. I use it in a lot of my pieces, so. Definitely need to get more of that. I'm gonna use a little bit of lamp black. Just to give it a bit more impact. And then I'm gonna take a bit of burnt umber. Just drop in the burnt. You might get the idea. I'm basically going around and making it look like coffee spilling all over. And I'm doing that using various shades. So this first layer that we're doing around, it's fairly light. You're not trying to get it as dark as you want it. We're gonna do a, a few more splatters on top to create some variation. So now I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow ochre and just drop that in. And I'm gonna take that same yellow ochre and drop it in over here. And then a bit of the reddish brown. And drop that in as well. Now I want to have a few more drips, so I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to add a little bit more black right here. And have that drip off the page. So now we've got a few. All right, so it's time to do a few more splatters here. I'm going to do them with my red. Don't be afraid to get a little messy with clear water and brown. It's just about having fun right now. Putting some burnt umber around. Maybe a little more black. I'm gonna do a little bit over here because it's looking a little too symmetrical. You can make yours as messy as you want. You don't have to follow how crazy I'm going. All right, so we're gonna let that dry. But in the meantime, I'm gonna start adding a little bit more to the inside. So I'm gonna go over this again with clear water. And if it's not completely dry, that's okay. You can either wait for it to dry or just go back in it like I am here. Sometimes that creates more blooms when you work it when it's not fully dry and I'm quite all right with that. Because this is such a messy piece, not being too particular about it. So I'm gonna darken it now. I'm just gonna throw in some burnt umber. I'm really trying to define the coffee. I want the coffee to look darker than the outside. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more red. Wherever I see it's still wet, I'm dropping in the red. Reddish brown, I should say. Maybe a little more yellow ochre here. And because I'm not liking quite how stark that is, I want the whitest part to be the, the mug. I'm actually gonna drop in a little bit of clear water and darken that white spot a bit. And I use my brush to do that because it gives me a bit more control. So if I drop in clear water, it's going to bleed into that spot. But then I use my brush to lift some of it out. All right, so now I'm gonna just keep on working the center here, adding a bit more dark brown till I get it the darkness that I want. Watercolors are always drying lighter. So just keep that in mind. If you think it's dark enough as it dries, it's probably going to lighten quite a bit. This is almost 
as dark as I'd want it. I'm pretty happy with that. All right. All right, so this is a good stage to let it dry and I'll come back and show you what to do next. All right, so now that that layer is dry, we can go ahead and add a few more details. I'm gonna wanna add some color to the stem of my mug, to the handle, sorry. Um, so what you can do is same as before, we're just gonna drop in some clear water and we're gonna leave a little shine mark like we did with the coffee to represent that this is porcelain or made with a shiny glass material. And you can choose what color you want your mug to be. I have a rainbow of mugs, so I'm just gonna pick blue. Something just a little bit more interesting than your typical white mug. And then what I'm gonna do is help redefine the edge a little bit. So I'm gonna take some black and using the tip of my dagger brush, or you can use a liner brush if you have one, um, just define the edge a little bit in some spots. And it doesn't have to be everywhere. And that actually ended up a little bit thicker than I wanted, but that's okay. I like to roll with it. And I'm gonna soften this up a little bit. I'll show you how in a bit. But just go around as thin as you can possibly get it. And just in some areas, being careful not to rest your hand on wet paint. Just go around and redefine it. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with the inside. I'm just gonna add a little bit of definition. So I want that white to really pop. All right, now we can actually, where I did it a little too thick, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and add some water to butt up against it. And as soon as you do that, it pulls that black outward. And it's a little bit more interesting. So now what I'm gonna do is add some splatters everywhere with clear water. And you'll see why I did that in a sec. I find clear water, um, you get bigger splatters. This is gonna give you a bit of variation. So now we're gonna take a little bit of dark brown and drop that in everywhere. And where there's clear water, it's gonna bleed. Now I'm gonna take a bit of the reddish brown. And this is how I often get more variation. Some of my splatter marks. A little black. Just have fun with it. You can go a little overboard. This is a painting that you really just want to have fun. Make it look like you made quite the mess on the coffee. All right, so that's that's about what I would want. I'm gonna lighten a few of the gray ones just by adding and clear over top. And then I'm gonna redefine, come in with a bit of blue and just help clean that up a little bit. All right. And then because I want my coffee to have yet another layer, I'm gonna quickly do one more layer on there before doing the final touches, which is adding a little bit of white and I'll show you what I'm doing there. So I'm just adding a bit of clear water, a bit more of the red. And then once this is fully dry, I'm gonna do a few white splatters and it will be done. All right, so last but not least, we're just gonna do a few final details. I like to use this poster color for my white paint. I find it's nice and thin, but not too thin, and it shows up really well over top of the watercolor. So I'm gonna do a few white splatters over top, just in a few areas, 
over here where it's darker and you'll see it shows up better. And then I'm gonna take some red and add a few more over top. I find as it's drying, I'm always sort of reevaluating how much I wanna add or take away. So I think that looks great. So now all that's left to do is sign the painting. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed painting along with me, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you wanna see other videos just like this one. Thanks for watching.